It's time to show you one of my favorite bold birch trees using my flat brush and this metal blade. If you don't have a metal blade, you can cut up an old credit card. Just be sure that when you cut it up, you're not cutting where the um, numbers go because uh, that will rip your paper up. So just make sure it's a nice clean edge and not a bumpy one. So I'm putting down, um, this one is, I had some green on my brush. So this is actually a uh, Pants a yellow medium that had a little bit of green in it and that's okay. I want to just mark it in there and then I have my Quinn pink going in next. Um, I'm putting them in this order because I know that the yellow hits the, the reds and it turns orange so I'm okay with these two colors mingling and not making mud. And, um, and then I'm gonna put my ultramarine blue down here and I'm okay that it hits that pink because it will turn purple and I'm okay with that. I'm working fairly fast because this needs to be wet for these kind of to mingle about. And then what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, just push them in there, watch my edges, see if my birch trees are going to look any kind of funny. And this is my pink and just throwing some more pink in because I really like want these to be super bold and um, they're a lot of fun that way. And I'm cleaning up this edge here just because I want some decent edges. Now watch I am cleaning off my brush because I don't want to totally pollute the colors. So run down and wipe it off on your paper towel. down and um and then i'm gonna leave it now this is a fabriano artistico paper and the reason why i'm using this paper is because it's gonna dry a little differently than my stonehenge paper um because and this is important because i i don't want it to be so wet that when i go to scrape my colors um just come right back through i want them to stay put so arches paper and the fabriano artistico paper are really good ones for this now in here I've mixed up, um, this is a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It makes like a really nice blue gray, as you can see, um, mingling it here. Now I haven't used indigo for this because I'm looking for a little bit more variation of color. And I'm watching here on my paper, like it's fairly glossy, but I just want to make sure that it's sort of, I've left it to set in a little bit. And now I am taking that murky mix and I am putting it right over top of those colors. Look at that fearless you need to be fearless to do tricks like this so um get in and get out and you see where you know i have left it to sink in the paper so underneath that coating of this murky stuff my colors exist and that will be interesting when i go to scrape okay this is softly putting them in not really ripping through my colors and then I'm going to put that brush down and pick up my metal uh, knife blade. And um, you can use different edges. Just be careful you don't cut yourself. And if you're worried about that, use your credit card. Okay, so I'm going to check it. If I've moved it over and it looks like it's staying, then I would continue. But I can see that my paints are just sort of floating back through. So I'm going to wait a little bit and let them set in a little bit more. And I'll occasionally check and you have to really be patient with this process because um, see, I'm going to check again here on this one and I, I can see that the paint's starting to stay where I put it. So I'm going to turn around and just scrape here and there. Now I am using little C scrapes and I'm not digging the blade right into my paper. All I'm doing is pushing the paint. Now I can see here, you see that paint did kind of go back. So wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna dab up a little dot that I had over here. So you really have to just sort of check and be patient. Let's try it up here in this red, use the edge here. There's my C shape. Looks pretty good. Paint's starting to not move back. I'm giving a wiggle. Yeah, okay. So we're pretty much there now. And once you get there, it's crucial that you start moving fast because um, it will dry. So now you're going to be racing. So instead of waiting, you're going to be trying to cruise around your birch tree and um, push these 
paints around so that it looks like they're going to stay in a little C formation. Jump to two if you've got more trees on the go. And um, I have two on the go here, but I think when you're first starting this technique, it's important that maybe you just do one at a time. I'm going to be fast, so I will just cruise over both these trees as I go. Um, note too that I will be using both sides of the blade. One's longer, one's shorter. And this will give you different marks, so you don't want everything to be the same width. You can also turn it as I am kind of doing, and it's on a little bit of an angle here and there. And this is important because you're going to get different sizes of bark coming through. So be careful you're not digging into the paper. Just giving those nice C formations and leave the darks. Like I'm starting to get some darks right in the center of my birch tree. So those, some of them are okay, but we want little knobs here and there. So push that dark around. Isn't this the coolest technique? I just love this technique. I mean, look at that. You can play, like these are bold birches, so I've used some really radical colors, but um, you can use all kinds of different colors. The trick is to lay down some lighter colors and then put a darker color on top. All right, time for my branches and I'm using my rigger and um, that's like a tiny little branch. It's too small for that tree. So I will go and make these branches much thicker, but right now I really just am interested in um, where to place them and then maybe putting in some little knobs here and there if I need them. Now, one thing I did on this branch that I didn't really care for is if you look directly across to the other side, it's they're almost the same height in the tree. So try to make sure that your branches are not all the same heights just for the sake of um, aesthetics. Now maybe I'll put this guy behind this tree. Now, if you want, you can do some more bark with a darker color as I'm kind of coming in here to just accentuate some of that. Um, see, I'm only taking it where it's already dark. So you can accentuate it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's really up to you and what your, your likes are. I think it's time to adjust my branches. So I'm going to thicken them up um, because my trees are fairly... Um, big. I'm using that number four round brush. I'm just following the lines of my rigger now. I'm being very careful with my tip not to leave a big blob down. ahead and sign this down here now the bottom of this tree looks exactly like how you see it the base there's kind of cut off but it's exactly the same thing I'll just push it up here make sure that you can see the whole thing and that's pretty much it so that's your boulder birches